Alrighty, traders, it is Thursday, January 4th, 2024. Welcome to our daily market recap and trade recap uh, on the day. So we had a nice uh, down day again. So I love it when the market's dropping like it is. Uh, so market down, account up. We uh, love that phrase in our Discord, uh, N-D-U-A-U. So N-D-A-U or M-U-A-U, either way, I don't care, market up, market down, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're really not directional traders, we're pretty neutral, and our strategies work up and down. They work really great when we're going down. Uh, so let's get into the markets and see where we have today. Uh, I got some cool stuff to share with you guys. Uh, so let's take a look at where the markets are so we can figure out where our trades should be heading. Uh, and uh, we'll start in SPY. So you had the SPX down 16 points today. So SPY was down a buck 51 on the session. One of the things to look at, and I, by the way, I cleaned up some charts for you guys. So you're not seeing a ton of spaghetti out there that everybody hates uh, on it. So I keep that for myself. Then I'll just share some of these basic charts with you guys. So it's a little easier to see and read for you when you're watching on YouTube. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Uh, and SPY, we came down yesterday, tapped on the uh, 21 EMA. Today, breaking under it just a bit uh, with MACD and RSI falling. RSI is all down to that 50 level. Uh, if it breaks below that, I think we got some more downside to go. Now, what I did leave on the screen was the green, which is our 21 EMA, which is a really a key indicator for me. And then MACD, RSI. Uh, and then what I took, did, I took off some of the other MAs, I took off the Bollinger Bands, but I did leave the three ATR levels here, uh, which do give me some ideas of you know, what trades we can put on. Uh, and I also left a 200-day uh, moving average down here on so we can get a sense of whether we're up or down as far as trend goes. But a uh, good pullback today. Now, on the uh, weekly uh, chart, one down bar doesn't really make a difference. Uh, RSI tipping over, heading lower. Uh, but I like the 21 EMA uh, here, maybe as a uh, potential target. Do we revert back to the 21? Well, 21 is rising, so it may come up to meet us somewhere uh, in here. But uh, I think we still could have some, some downside to go. Uh, the Santa rally is technically over with. We're into the throes of January. We got some uh, unique things heading up, uh, including VIX expiration and options expiration uh, in two weeks. Uh, we may not wait till those points to get uh, some wild and woolly action here, uh, but just some nice steady pullback to the 21 EMA, which is perfect. If we bounce from here, I think everything would be totally fine uh, on that. So we'll see what happens uh, on the queues. Same thing. Now the queues, same thing on these pullbacks, but you get the RSI breaking below the 50 yesterday. Uh, so you're just talking about an accelerating downtrend on the queues, the, the tech stocks. Uh, you see that we broke down through the 21 EMA yesterday uh, and then headed south uh, further today, uh, closing near the lows of the session. So some pressure on the queues uh, here. I think at any point in here, you might start to look for some potential support and maybe we can draw uh, some lines in here and get some idea that and maybe somewhere in this area here, we could potentially bounce uh, on it. We could probably also take a look at some fib retracements from uh, any of these areas uh, in here. And if we draw the fib levels and we take a look at the 618, it matches up exactly with this area over here. Uh, so we're right in this range where we got some support and the 618. Uh, so I think that's uh, something you can watch for as a potential area to bounce and move higher. So if we get uh, the pullback to the 618, I think that's a pretty good pullback and a reason to move higher. Let's take a look at IWM. Uh, so IWM uh, breaking through uh, slightly yesterday, the 21 EMA, and today heading down through it, finishing near our lows of the session. And if we take a look at, uh, let's see, 20, I'm going to extend this out to, to where we are. Uh, so we take a look at this gap on IWM uh, that we've had in play here. We're pretty close to filling that gap. So uh, gaps need to be filled at some point uh, for us to move higher, at least in many people believe that. So you know, MACD heading lower, RSI heading lower, breaking the 50. Uh, so we've got definite drop in uh, RSI levels. 
did we complete enough of this in here after breaking this uh, this trend line? Uh, possibly. So we'll take the trend line off uh, for now. And uh, let's see where we go. So we'll keep this level here moving forward. Uh, and uh, does this flip from a support you know, resistance support level to a resist back to a resistance level. Who knows? But wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of a bounce potentially coming up in here. Uh, some pretty strong uh, down move uh, on the weekly, though. And uh, we're quite a ways away from the 21 EMA there. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on uh, overall on uh, IWM. If we take a look at the number of stocks trading above their 50 day moving average fell again today to 88 percent. Uh, and uh, seems to be accelerating. Again, I talked about this, you know, ad nauseum for many of you, is that uh, when you hit that 90% mark, it's a pretty good place for the markets to roll over. The question is, how much of a rollover do we get? Uh, put call ratio dropped a tad on the session today. VIX getting a little active uh, here, moving all the way up to 14. So uh, not a whole lot of anything, but it's off of its $12 lows up to 14, was up, uh, you know, nine cents today uh, not a big gain in volatility as the markets have been dropping so the vix is not indicating that there's an increase of volatility or fear in the market right now although i believe the vix is pretty much a dead indicator uh, but either way you look at it uh the vix is not doing a whole lot of anything all right let's look at the u.s dollar here the u.s dollar uh, on the session dropped just fractionally but macd is heading higher rsi has been heading higher and potentially the downtrend here. You now it's either a bounce within the downtrend where we're stopping right at the 21 EMA. So 21 EMA, but we did get a bullish piece of our reversal. Anything from here move higher, I think it'd be a pretty good uh, move uh, for the index. And we'll start to watch the dollar here. Do we get any strength? I don't know that we get a whole lot more, but you know, maybe we, we pop up a little bit more uh, from here. And then if we take a look at the 10-year treasury, I've been talking about this uh, for a couple of days. We are breaking above the downtrend line. You've got momentum heading higher on the MACD and the RSI. I believe, as I've mentioned, I will stick to it now. I believe that the 10-year already has price cuts priced in uh, here. If we don't get any in January, which no one's expecting, and we you know, if we get one in March, great. It's already priced in. I don't see where bonds, okay, I don't see where rates are going to continue to drop. I think the moves are priced in. And they've been being priced in since October, end of October. Uh, so we're priced in with that, which means to me, I think the TLT run is a little bit over for now. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not saying it, it goes back to zero or 80s or whatever here, but uh you know, you've definitely broken the uptrend line, uh, for sure. Uh, so the uptrend line's been broken. You've got a bullish, or I'm sorry, a bearish PSR reversal signal that happened yesterday. MACD's heading lower. RSI's heading lower. The weekly's starting to roll over uh, here as well. And we were getting awfully close to that. And we hit it up here. We were riding the 3 ATR. We got close to the 3 ATR last week uh, and reversed lower. So do we come back down to the 21? That would be my guess, somewhere in the mid-90s. Uh, we're already at 97. Maybe we head lower to you know, 96, 95, uh, somewhere in that way. If you want to head all the way back down to the lower uh, 3 ATR, if we get extremely uh, overdone, then maybe we're looking at 94-ish, uh, something like that. So if you haven't taken profits and you got in back here, I would at least be legging out uh, or taking profits on TLT. I'm not saying it's dead. I'm not saying it's never going higher again. But I think the move in rates is largely done uh, for now. And I think you wait to see what the Fed's going to do. Uh, and I think that's really what's going to control things. If the Fed indicates or continues to indicate that they're not going to cut six times this year, like the, uh, you know, the indicators predict, uh, and we've already got a 100 basis point reduction in the 10 year if the fed doesn't cut 100 basis points this year or indicates that they may raise or not or hold okay i think that spells some problems for the market so i think the market is really waiting for the fed 
to give some clarity to the market on on their direction. Although I personally think the Fed's been clear all along. The Fed's not the one saying we're going to cut all year. They've indicated they may consider uh, some cuts, but uh, I think the market's pricing in way too many cuts uh, for this year. But we'll see. Do we head to a recession? What happens? Who knows? All right. Uh, what are some trade opportunities? I think this pullback in SPY, uh, we'll just look at ES really quick. I think this pullback in ES to the 21 uh, day moving average in the middle of the ATR bands here on the daily, I think a little more pullback would be more helpful here, but I think we can start to consider uh, some strangle opportunities or some other trading opportunities on ES. And then if we look at Forex, uh, trading here we had a you know with the dollar pretty much flat to a little bit lower uh, on the session uh you saw the 6a moving lower uh 6b which is the british pound did head higher on the day uh canadian dollar fractionally higher on the day and then the euro higher on the day let's see where these things start to head but i think you're starting to get some clear definition in fact, uh, let's use the weekly to draw uh, a bit because I think uh, it gives you a better, a clearer point. You're starting to see that this uptrend and channel uh, is doing pretty well. We've got a nice pullback. We're in this, you know, towards the center of the channel. I think you can start to put some trades on 6A and 6E in here. I think both of those look pretty good. A nice pullback is exactly what we want uh, to be able to move higher. Let's take a look at oil. So we've got good trading opportunities. What we need is just more buying power. Uh, so we want to get into more of these particular trades. Uh, looking at the weekly, the weekly has been reversing higher on both the MACD and the RSI on oil. And if we're looking at the daily here, can't it's not really getting any traction higher or lower. It's just moving sideways for now as oil's trying to figure out what it wants to be. I still like oil. I'm bullish on oil overall. Uh, longer term here. And I think this is a perfect setup uh, to do more oil trades. And we actually had some come off today uh, for winter. So I like where we are on oil, uh, but oil did, uh, did drop on the session uh, a bit today. So let's take a look at gold. Where are we on gold? Is this an area we want to be playing in? Uh, I think this pullback has been super nice. Uh, on gold. Uh, I think this has been great as we got above the three ATR here, pulled back, uh, hit off, you know, this trend line, tried to hold the 21 EMA, moved higher, came back. We're sitting right at the 21 EMA uh, today. Some weakness in the, on the weekly here. So I think that's something to keep an eye on, but uh, I like where we're sitting a little bit of a drop in volatility. So it's not the greatest, but it's not a bad IVR. Uh, and uh, volatility here, uh, so I I like I like where this is squeezing to. I think you know this is a good opportunity potentially for gold to make another run higher, bounce off of this level. Uh, so I like gold. Uh, I like it into next year. Uh, if we take a look at uh, HE here, uh, and uh, we take a look at what lean hogs look like on the daily here, pretty much just flat, not doing anything. I, I think we can actually put a bit of a descending uh, triangle spin on this. Uh, so a descending triangle, maybe a break to the downside. Uh, let's keep an eye on what this looks like here. Uh, but I think if we break lower here on uh, lean hogs, uh, we could have some, some more downside to go. Weekly looks bearish. I think lean hogs could be heading lower. There's no trade there for me. Uh, HD copper. Uh, I love where we are. We are sitting right in the middle. Uh, for the most part, we're almost to the 21 EMA on the weekly, which is beautiful, which is also the 200 EMA. Uh, so I think that's really, really nice. Uh, where we are uh, on that. Uh, we've broken this downtrend uh, a bit in here. Uh, so I love where we are. We're hanging out right around the 21 EMA, but MACD and RSI are falling. Uh, so I think it's copper pulls back more. I think this is starting to get to give us a setup uh, for some more trades. We've already got two trades working in copper uh, right now. And then uh, live cattle, we do have trades working in live cattle. We had this descending wedge, which we broke out 
sideways and a bit to the upside. So I think that's a pretty good indicator um, of us moving a bit higher. Uh, I think the weekly looks good. Uh, MACD is rising off of over uh, sold levels and you've got RSI also rising the weekly, a little bit weak and just sideways uh, action in here, but they could look a little bit of a trend uh, line we can draw in here and uh, we'll keep an eye on what this looks like, but maybe we've got a bit of a wedge pattern. In fact, I can maybe stretch this out uh, to maybe even back in here a bit. So now we've got the opposite uh, ascending wedge. If we break to the downside, I'd be cautious on it, but I like where we are at the lower end of these ranges. And I think uh, live cattle sets itself up. Uh, we've got a really good trade right now running. We've got a one, one, two trade here. Uh, a unique setup on that, uh, 88% were up. And then my last one that we'll take a look at is Nat Gas. It had been on a pretty good bullish run uh, all week this week, breaking out of this uh, ascending wedge or triangle pattern here. So breaking out to the upside and uh, taking off pretty good on the session today. So uh, I called it. I've been telling you that this was a bullish um, opportunity to get long here. And this is why you got to be cautious. Uh, I think when you're trading that gas, because it can easily run to um, the top or bottom of a channel pretty quickly. You got to be cautious on that gas. So nothing to do there. Uh, sectors on the day, uh, leading sector would have been biotech. So biotech uh, having a good day up uh, over 1%, nothing else really having uh, a good day. The weakest sectors were energy, oil, and again, semiconductors as they continue to get, get slammed after this exponential run um, that they've had. Uh, I think it's an interesting thing here to keep an eye on financials, but they're looking pretty weak. If we're looking at regional banks, they're looking pretty weak on the daily. So I don't see uh, too many opportunities, but I do like, again, the gold miners into this year, but it's looking pretty weak here on this gap down. However, that gap gives us an opportunity to fill a gap uh, to the upside. So we'll we'll monitor it. We'll see what happens. But uh, you know, maybe we can bounce off this trend line and get some things moving higher. We'll see. I'm not going to make any plays in it right now as I'm going to stick to the futures. Uh, and then I don't like stocks. I don't trade stocks. I don't own any stocks. Uh, we'll keep it brief uh, today. But Apple down 1.2%. Now into oversold territory. I mean, just Apple smashing below. 21 uh, three days ago smashing below the three atr apple oversold here i would really think that uh this is an area that i would really consider selling probably a defined risk credit spread or uh, put credit spread something like that in apple expecting a little bit of a bounce as we get close to the 21 ema here uh, but apple pretty weak and if apple is going to stay this week the market's not going to do well Microsoft breaking below the 21 EMA, heading lower. That's a bearish sign. Amazon gapping down today. Uh, RSI and MACD heading lower. Very bearish sign there. Meta did have a little bit of an update, bouncing off the 21 EMA. So this is one of the few that looks decent. Uh, I don't know that it has enough to hold up the market. Google heading down. MACD and RSI also heading lower. RSI breaking below the 50. Uh, NVIDIA. A little bit of an update today. So you got some mixed Magnificent 7 here, which is keeping the market from really, I think, getting out of hand uh, to the downside. You can have a couple that are keeping this up. But if Apple and Microsoft and Amazon just want to go down, uh, I think this can be very concerning for uh, the markets in here. Uh, NVIDIA having a little bit of an update, but just struggling and bouncing right around this 21 EMA in here. No defined targets yet. So I would be avoiding that. Uh, Tesla on January 24th uh, earnings, uh, but this thing's just been selling off, breaking the 21 EMA, MACD and RSI heading lower. That's a bearish look uh, to it as well. And if you want to look at Netflix, this thing is just kind of bouncing around in here with no clear direction uh, in a sideways, maybe even a triangle, bit of a triangle pattern uh, as you look at it. So can you I think you got to be patient and I think you got to wait. All right, let's take a look at our account uh, on the day and we have updated for sure uh, the trading plan. So let's uh, get into the trading uh, tracker as well here. 
uh, as a trading plan. So today we finished the day uh, Delta 347, which is 0.09%, pretty Delta neutral, uh, pretty good. Theta 773 is light. We're at 0.19, so we're very light on Theta uh, right now. We've got to get some more Theta into this account. One of the reasons for this is we've only got two strangles working. Most of them have been closed. We have a lot of 112 trades uh, working in this particular account. So having all of, having said all of that, that's going to impact our theta. It's going to be much tougher to, for us to get to the theta uh, that we want to get to. But we also have uh, a lot of put debit spreads working. Uh, all right. So we ended the day net look at 402354. And the uh, great thing about that is that is yet another new all-time high. So every single day this month, new all-time high. Uh, we started at uh, 395 uh, at the beginning of the year. I did put a, uh, 60 grand into this account. Uh, so we were at 335 at the end of the year. We put 60 grand in. So we're we're uh, we're using that as our starting net lick. Uh, so 404, 354, new all-time high. Uh, BP usage. Uh, here dropped a bit today, 246, 539. Uh, we added some more bill. So I'm going to start tracking my buying power in bill just so you have an idea because to me, that's against our cash. It's still using up buying power. Uh, but I want to use, what is my BP percentage without bill? Um, I don't know if I put Sam's bill or maybe without bill. Um, what is my BP usage? So we're sitting right at 5105. That's my true BP. Yes, we're at 61% with Bill. Okay, I'm okay with without it. And so I really want to track uh, what that looks like uh, here. And we did have another $2,170 in realized gains today. So we've netted $6,700 in gains so far this month in three trading days. Uh, so we're having a, we're, we're off to the races and uh, let's cover what those are. And uh, this is our breakdown here by strategy. Uh, so you see our realized gains for the year is already 1.7% this month. And as we look down here at our strategies, uh, right now we've made $2,600 in gold strangles. Okay, we've made $1,560 in oil 112 trades. We've made another $610 on FB 112 trades, which is more of a hedge 112, uh, which is really our bear trap. So uh, the 112 is uh, our bear trap trade, uh, the FB bear trap, 610. Uh, and then down here, spec trades, we've made $1,900 on spec trades. And I'll show you what those were today. So the two trades I closed today, the first one was an oil. I closed the naked puts on an oil bear trap. Uh, trade. So the oil bear trap trade netted 1560 bucks uh, today, took 62 days uh, in this trade. It was a 75-day trade. Uh, we closed the naked puts out. We had already closed the PDS for a winner back in December. Uh, so we had a winner on the per, on the put debit spread, and we had a 93% a, a winner on the naked puts here. So overall, well over 100% winner uh, as this thing was managed uh, well uh, for us. So managed it. I don't know if it's to perfection, but we managed it uh, exactly right. So an oil bear trap trade winner. Uh, if we take a look at the other trade here, I did close the naked puts on an FB bear trap trade. Uh, so the FB bear trap, uh, we netted uh, 610 bucks on the naked puts. Now, again, on the uh, the FB bear trap or the one, FB 112 bear trap trades, those are more of a hedge trade. So we really don't count on the naked puts giving us a whole lot of anything, but hey, I'll take 610 bucks on a hedge trade on just the PDL. So that's going to leave us with uh, some nice open put debit spreads. If I'm looking right now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six 112 bear trap trades of different varieties. Some are the long-term bear trap. Some are the uh, standard bear trap, 112 trades. Some are the FB trades. Some are the uh, BA trades. Uh, All together, we're sitting on like six PDSs alone, which is giving us really good uh, negative delta on uh, the one. So it's keeping our delta in, 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 uh, in track. And we're actually able to adjust those and turn those PDSs into black swan hedge 
trades as well. So we'll continue to adjust those. I don't have, I do have one that's getting close to being turned into uh, a black swan hedge. In fact, there's a second one here uh, as well. So we'll probably turn a few of these into some black swan hedge trades. So it starts off as a bear trap trade, our traditional bear trap, different versions, different setups. Okay, you can you can use any of the bear trap style trades or to, to accomplish anything that you're looking to do. Do you want income? Do you want income with safety? Do you want more safety? Do you want a hedge? Do you want to turn these into uh, a, uh, do, you, do you want to take profits of the put debit spreads? Do you want to turn them into a hedge? Okay, how do you adjust them as you go? Can you tier them on? We do all of that in the Discord. Um, so you can run an entire portfolio on just the bear trap trades alone. And we put them on, on different underlyings for different reasons, with different sizes, with different put debit spreads, with different deltas, uh, with different trap sizes. And then we adjust them differently depending on what we're trying to get out of the trade. That's where the mastery comes from on the bear trap. So overall, great uh, month so far. Uh, we're sitting here nicely uh, up 6,700 bucks, sitting at new all-time highs where I, while I'm watching people that are you know covered uh, you know, covered calls or selling, you know, cash secured puts or something are struggling this week with the market dropping. We're having a great week. Uh, so net lick keeps rising. We keep closing out trades. We're sitting perfect with our buying power. We're sitting perfect with our Delta. We're a little light on Theta. Uh, we'll get some things working tomorrow. And we looked at the market to see what we can do. So we've got some great ideas for tomorrow's trading. If you like this video, Click the like button. You know what to do on that. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Get some other people involved. Tell some other people to subscribe. Let's help as many people as we can figure out how to trade profitably. We had a 42% year last year. We had an 80% year uh, in 2022. So the more bearish the market, the more we're going to make here. And we haven't even scratched the surface of some of the new trades that we've got going. Uh, there's some really cool stuff going on. We've got uh, some more moderators, some more people sharing their trades uh, in uh, the Discord. So we continue to grow uh, and uh, we'd love to have you with us. So you can see the code below, K-I-N-G, to get 50 bucks off your first month. Come and join us. Uh, once you get in there, you're going to find a ton of learning, brand new trade plan, brand new trade tracker, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Uh, so we'll see you there. Uh, everybody have a great rest of your evening. And uh, we'll see you in trading tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Bye-bye.